Hello folks, Major Gosnell here, and today is going to be episode 15 of my Stationer's playthrough. Now, on the last episode, I had worked on automated heating, and as soon as I uploaded the video, I received a number of messages, both on the Discord and on my channel, saying that maybe I hadn't set it up in the most uh, efficient way possible. In point of fact, I'd actually set it up in the least efficient way possible, with the cooler and the heater switching on and off alternatively every second second. So yeah, I kind of cocked that one up rather badly. So what I've done is I've redesigned the logic system for the heating and I've disabled the cooling entirely for the time being and I'm going to show you that in just a moment. However, before we go over there, I want you to take note of the temperature on the console here. Oh yes, I linked uh, a console, uh, two consoles, one for pressure and one for temperature to my pressurized room at the back of the base. Just some electrical wiring connecting up, a, um, I believe, gas logic board is inside the console and it's just giving us a reading then on temperature and a separate run on pressure. So, what we're going to do, we are going to run downstairs and just remember there now, 18.2 on the temperature. So we're going to run down here and run all the way along here. Jesus, <laughs> a bit drunk this morning. Uh, run down here. Now, before I show you the logic system, I'm just going to open the airlock here, cycle through so it's accessible. You might be wondering why I've got it set up like that, and I shall explain it to you in a few minutes' time. Now, this is the new logic system for the heating. So bear in mind now the uh, cooler is disabled for the time being. It can still be activated manually. But for the heater, what I've done is I have followed the advice of Deidre on the Discord, so a shout out to him, and Fingertief as well was of great help. And basically, this is a dead zone sort of heater system. So basically, the heater will switch on, sorry, the heater will um, heat the room to 30 degrees. When the temperature falls back down to 20, the heater will switch on again to 30. So, what we're going to do, I'm just going to show you how this basically works. We got two memory chips, one with the minimum temperature of 30, one with the maximum temperature of, um, sorry, minimum temperature of 20 and maximum temperature of 30. So that's in Kelvin, 293, and 303. Now, over here we have the logic reader, which is connected to, um, do, 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 if I'm not mistaken, the gas sensor that's inside the room, and the temperature it's reading. So, here we have a select unit. Select unit you can create with the processor chip, and here we have it, it's uh, got the output on the logic compare, here. It has logic memory max and logic memory min, so that's linked up to the two memory chips over here. The compare unit is comparing the readout from the temperature readout from the logic reader against the settings on the logic select, the min max on the select unit, and it's set to greater than. It's feeding into the batch writer, which is telling the heater to switch on. Now, I'm going to make this easy for you to understand. I know it took me a while to get my head around how this actually works with the min-max. So imagine you have a small child, okay? And the small child is the, um, the to-do is the compare unit here, okay? So this is the small child here, and you're playing a game with the small child. And you say to the child, you can't dance until the clock hits 20. And when the clock hits 20, you can dance until it hits 30. So the child will dance from 0 to 30, and then you tell him stop. And at 30, you say to him, okay, you need to stop dancing until the clock goes back to 20. So then it will go back down to 20, and the child should stop dancing. That's the easiest analogy I can make for um, how the compare unit works. It basically knows that if it's less than the minimum setting, the heater is on. Oh no, wait. If it's less than the maximum setting, sorry, the heater is on. And if it's greater than the maximum setting, the heater is off. But it won't switch back on again until it's greater than the um, 
uh, well, until it's equal to the minimum setting. So it's basically a dead zone in between the two, so it won't switch on, sorry, it won't switch off until it hits more than uh, turn to AC here. But then the minimum requirement for it switching back on is at 20C, so it won't switch on between 30 and 20. It will only switch on when it hit, drops back down to 20 degree, or 20C. I hope that makes sense. If anybody has any questions, I can just drop a message in the video link and I will be sure to try to explain it better to you. If you come on the Discord as well, there are some really smart people here. You can probably explain it a hell of a lot better than I can. But uh, just imagine it's sort of like telling the computer that you can't switch on before 20. Oh, sorry, you can't um, switch on. You have, ah, you have to switch off after 30, but you can't switch back on until after 20. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So, that's the new logic system there. If you want to take a screenshot, by all means. And if you're on the Discord and have any questions, if you see me, drop me a line. And Deidre, uh, that's D-D-R-E-I, was uh, the one who posted a screenshot of this particular setup. So give him a shout out as well. Now, back to the bug. Mm -hmm. We have over here. Now, you notice that the airlock is set like this, right? So, and this would be how it would standardly be if somebody is outside of the airlock. So we're just going to run all the way back around here. Do, 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 do. I really need to delete that piece of ground there. Now, up in here. Now, I want you to take a note of the temperature again, and it's dropped down to 16C. The room is fully pressurized. So why are we losing temperature when the heater is actually on inside there? And the heater is on. The heater before I did all the logic chip systems was working perfectly and was heating the room up to ridiculous levels, regardless of the airlock setting. However, I have discovered that for some reason, when the airlock door is set in this side, with the outer door open and the inner door closed, it loses temperature. So now, I'm just going to cycle that back again. With the outer door closed and the inner door open, the temperature will actually start going up. And I'm at a bit of a loss as to why, because the airlock is fully pressurized. There shouldn't be any heat loss here. It wasn't like that before I did the logic systems, and I'm completely lost as to why. I haven't done any welding or changed the structural integrity of the room since the heater was working perfectly. So I'm a little confused as to what is causing that issue. So if anybody has any ideas, please, please let me know on the uh, channel or on the Discord, because it's a real puzzler, and it fucks up my automatic lights, which only switch on when the pressure is in the airlock. As you can see here, the temperature should go back up now, and the temperature is going back up again. So yeah, it's, um, it's a bit of a puzzler, and I cannot figure it out for the life of me. Now, I think that is everything I wanted to show you in this episode. Oh, yeah. There was one other thing I wanted to show you. I have added a few extra solar panels on the roof up here because my original setup with the um, with the automated heating and cooling was draining those batteries at quite an alarming rate, but that seems to have been sorted out now. So yeah, that is pretty much everything. If anybody can help me with that issue, I would appreciate it. And I hope to catch you on the next episode. Please hit the like, and if you can, the subscribe button. Thank you.